I'm all oh, Paul's prepared. Come on, Paul lad. Wow. Come on, lad. The, the thing is, I thought I best get prepared because I've done I've done live interviews before, and I'm sat there going. Sometimes you do run out of questions. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Absolutely, I did. We one. had one. We had one on Monday, mate. We had you know Savannah Marshall, the boxer. Yeah, yeah. So I know Savannah, and we've had Savannah on the podcast, and I was like, Savannah, will you come and do a Zoom training for the guys? And she was like, aye, aye, aye. And when she turned on, there was no Zoom training. She was just on her phone. And I was like, I thought you were going to have PowerPoint slides and do yeah. it. And so I just ended up interviewing her. But I was like, well, I've already interviewed her for my podcast, so I had to start asking her questions that A, I hadn't thought of, and B, that I hadn't fucking asked her before. So luckily, the lads had a bunch of questions for us, so <laughs> it wasn't like a 10-minute interview. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Well, I've, uh, I've, done, I've done quite a few little bits but it's not with anyone. I, I don't, I don't want to sound bad because I've got. I'm, I'm interviewing these people and they're decent people. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're people I don't know anything about. They're not famous people. They're just regular people who've got stories. Yeah. And when it's that's a regular, me. yeah, that's yeah, me. That's you, yeah. But I, I know quite a bit about you. Um, yeah, but these people yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. So then you get yeah. sat there and you think, and then when they don't talk, I you think, and you get stuck with that question, which is, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah. And, that, and that's such a hard question for people to answer. I hate that question. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, fucking hell, I've got quite. Like, how long we got? Yeah, <laughs> fucking hour and a half. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? And then it's like when someone's not used to that, it's such a well, what he wants to say. Ah, it's weird. I remember I interviewed a guy called Frank King. He's called the mental health comedian. Right. He's an American guy. Uh, um, and I got him off one of these podcast guest things. Uh, and um, I sat there and we started and he didn't say anything. And I'm yeah. like, shit, I don't know what I'm going to say yet. So uh, it was really awkward. Uh, and uh, we was quiet for about I think you have to have seconds. some interest in the person so you yeah. know what questions you want. Like yeah, sometimes yeah. if you don't know the person, you're like, well, I'm, I don't know what about you is interesting. Yeah, so yeah. therefore, I've got nowhere to go. Yeah, and that's what that that's one of the reasons. So I've done quite a bit of research because yeah. I think it's really important too. Because I never expected to be here. I'll be honest; I didn't expect you to respond because nobody because really nobody ever does. Like <laughs> I, I tell you why. So I, <laughs> I mean, sometimes they do. You just got to be a good name dropper. Yeah. That's if you name drop and you throw numbers at them, that's what we do. You got to because the thing is, what we do is what I figured out, especially with marketing and that. You have the first question has to be, "What's in it for them?" Yeah. If you can show someone what's in it for them, they'll fucking come over every day of the week. So w- I know what's in it for me, which is why I said yes, mm. and why I do it here, because it means I don't have to sit down, look at a camera and say, hey, here are three ways to, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'll I'll do it. And this is the only reason I do my podcast now. I'm not bothered about the long interview. I want the fucking reels and the clips. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. get people's attention, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But most people don't know what's in it for them, so you've got to tell them. So I'll name drop, and I'll show them numbers. Here's how many followers I got. Here's how many downloads I get. Yeah, and then yeah. they're like, they can connect the dots. That's and why. That's why it's difficult to get people. That's why we're stuck. Yeah. That's why we're stuck where we are because because you got, haven't had anyone yet. Yeah. We've got yeah, this yeah. massive value, and we have, and I know we have yeah. because my my wife's a mental health nurse. She's yeah. been for twenty three years. Yeah. I've got loads of experience. Yeah. Prison service, working yeah. with young people, working with people with substance misuse. Yeah. We've got this massive value. Yeah. But nobody's seeing that massive value. Yeah. Because because not I. Uh, well, that's why I paid t- I paid Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah. I had to pay him seventeen grand. Did you really? Uh, but I knew that once I had him, I wouldn't have to pay anyone else, and yeah. I haven't. And then it's just steamrolled from there. It's weird. It's what's been really strange to me is how all of these people that I've had on kind of all know each other, not just know who each other are. They're all in the same circle. Yeah. So one thing I say is like, who who should I get on next? Yeah, and yeah. they'll say someone. I'll be like, do you have that contact number for them? Yeah. <laughs> and or do you know who their agent is? And that's the value. A that's really cool thing to do is, is there's this woman that I want on. She hasn't even got a big following, but I love her work, right? She's called Siru Chola. She's an amazing woman. And uh, I just looked at her. She, she wasn't responding. And I was like, eh, what can I do here? So I looked at who she follows, and I name dropped them. And then she responded straight away. I was like, I've had Vicky Patterson on, Chris Williamson, and I think it was, it was James. James Smith, Chris Williamson, Vicky Patterson. She responded like that. Because obviously she wants to be seen in that. Yeah, yeah, circle. Yeah. So, uh, and where they started, like I, I don't even know how I come across you, but I think it was through James. Oh, was I, it? I wanted James Smith on oh, because shit, uh, I, I, I've, I've followed James for a long time. He's very hard to get. James yeah. is so hard to get. He doesn't, he doesn't even respond. Uh, um, he has a mad part about James. So I've known James since 2014. I consider him one of my good mates. Yeah, yeah. When we talk to each other about podcast, we'll have to go through our agent. Yeah. We have the same agent. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I'm, I've watched the podcast. With Mate, him. it's mad. We have exactly the same <laughs> fucking agent. I'm like, what the fuck? But it's because. Well, he's unorganized as fuck, so we, that's what I have to do with Kath. I would say yes to everything. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, with, yeah, yeah. She, Kath basically protects me time. <laughs> do you know what I mean? She has yeah, to protect yeah. the whole thing because I just yeah, say yeah. yes and I'll be all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, mate, we're recording. That's cool, man. So I, we can I use think, any of that you want. I think, I think we can just use this as we Natural are. Natural combo, and, huh? and, that's, and that's the way. So our 
our whole ethos of what we do. And mm-hmm. right back to when I started just doing the health and fitness stuff was mm-hmm. it's real life. Mm-hmm. We're real life people, mm-hmm. working class background. Mm-hmm. We've got nine to five jobs. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? We're just mm-hmm. normal people. So, yeah. and, and I always want this to be real. And I think that's why the subscribers we have yeah. like what we do. Because yeah. we've got a discord and we chat to them. It's in like the, day. the people that are, the people that listen to it love it because it's not, because I get asked all the time on mine, like when you get going to get someone normal on? Yeah. Mate, well, the problem is someone normal, no one wants to listen to that yeah, until yeah. they listen to it. Yeah, yeah, Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. It's not going to make them want to tune in. When they're tuned in, they love it. So when I'll get, I'll often get, I'll have a paying client here for a half day consult, right? I'll be like, mate, do podcast. And that's when the normal clients come on and people love it. Yeah, yeah. But it's not going to get people that don't listen to listen. People that already listen and bought in, so you kind of need some names that have a following yeah. to draw new first-time people in because they want to listen to them, not me. Yeah, yeah. And then when people see that, they see that you've spoke to Tyson Fury and Ant yeah. Middleton, and then they, they yeah. see a name like John Richardson. Like, oh, that must be someone really big because he's had him, him, and him. I'm exactly, going yeah, to watch this. I, and then they, they often will get more value yeah. from just a normal bloke who's done, a, who's gone through some shit yeah, yeah. than the will from someone. Who's a celebrity because they're used to hearing the celebrity answers. Yeah, yeah. Same stories. Same stories. Same stories. And when you've had someone that's media trained as well, like someone that's been in the media for a long time, they're so used to seeing those answers that it just comes natural to them. Do you know what I mean? And and you know, I had exactly the same thing when I spoke to Frank King. So he's Mm -hmm. done quite a a lot of TED talking in America and I'd watched quite a few of his stuff and every time he's on stage, he's saying the same things. He's telling the same stories. And then when he come on on with me, this is like five years later, same stories. And and it was good. It was nice talking to him, but it is just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And anyone who's already seen that, they're going to watch it again because they know what he's going to say. So... And and I think if I if I look at the same people I've already had on, people keep saying, "Oh, can you have Amy Wilson back on because she was great?" Yeah. Well, I, I can, but it's it's just. It doesn't get you new listeners. No. It doesn't get you new listeners. No. I, I get and, it. I'm. And that's that's I guess why I'm here. Mm-hmm. I know what the value is in this mm-hmm. because you've got a, you've got a big following. Um, and if someone sees my name, get me blue tick tomorrow. Yeah. I got a message this morning. <laughs> is get that, a blue is that tick. What it uh, is. Uh, buzzing. Oh, but wow. I'm not buzzing. It doesn't really change anything except. Mate, the amount of message I get saying, you know, there's this fake account messaging people about crypto. Mate, mate, part of us is like, it's annoying. But if you think that's me, yeah. if, I'm not even saying that you're kind of, I'm not saying you deserve to get ripped off. But if you fall for that, you're fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the first message says this, right? It says, hello, I'm trying to sensitize my followers to the benefits of a secondary income. Like, if you think, <laughs> if you follow me and think that I would say that, you're fucking nuts. But I think even if you if you don't follow, if you don't know who you are, and you read that message and go, yeah, yeah, I'm going to invest my, in that. Uh, this sounds like a guy from South Shields. <laughs> that sounds like. Uh, a this good, sounds like a guy from South Shields. That sounds like madness. a really good idea. Uh, that's some so, madness. I know we did say before that we're not going to say, oh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, but obviously, some of my subscribers probably don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Which part do you want to know? Um, I guess what I wanted to speak about was what got me thinking about speaking to you, mm-hmm. the video that you did um, about the cliff. Mm-hmm. So if you can you just tell us a bit about the, the time of the cliff? <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. So 2014, I'm living in Marbella. I have got four-bedroom villa with a private pool. I've got two amazing kids, hot wife, car of my dreams. And I'm living this life that when I was 21 and I started out on this self-employed journey and this... Buying into the Tony Robbins stuff when I first started, all the vision board stuff, all the mantras, the seminars, the personal development and the business stuff. I'd got to where I wanted to be and it didn't feel anything like I thought it would, mm. like 13 years previously. Um, and as I was in my beer, I'd built this business that actually didn't take me that much time. So there was a lot of boredom and, and I suppose, I think about why I moved there and I moved there because I'd, I'd subscribed to this notion that you have to cut out all the negative people from your life and don't be around energy hoovers and mood hoovers or whatever they're fucking called these days and get all get rid of all these toxic people and that. So I moved to Marbella where I didn't know anyone. And then one day I was just like, actually, the only person left here, I've cut out all these negative people and these complainers, the only person left is me. So I'm lonely. I built a business. I've got more money than I ever thought I'd have. I'm not saying more money than I knew what I'd do with because it wasn't me. I mean, I was doing all right. Doing all right. Um... And I've got all this money and I'm kind of, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know anyone else that's successful. None of my family are self-employed. I've got all the same mates from when I was a kid. Well, I've moved to Marbella, so I've got no mates, if I'm fair, if I'm honest. And I'm bored as fuck. And when I started 
seeing some success, probably a couple of years before that. Again, I didn't know how to deal with it, so I started drinking. I started sniffing a lot of coke. And in my bay, obviously, that's the culture. So if you think about the, pl- the the way I describe how I felt, when you've been on a week-long lads holiday and you go on a week-long sesh, I did that for two years. So this clearly takes its toll on okay. your physical health. I gained five stone in two years. It clearly takes its toll on your mental health. It takes its toll on your relationships. And while I was there, I just kept having these meltdowns. Like, I remember one time we went to this place called Estepona. And we're in the car park and it's the porn. It's a beautiful, really quiet place. It's classed as Malaga, but it's quite far away from it. It's about an hour and a half away from Malaga Airport. And in the air, in the I'm driving and I get in the car park and I can't get parked. And I just fucking lose my shit. I get out of the car, sit on the floor, and I start crying. My wife is like, I think you're depressed. It's the first time I'd ever really looked at it. I think you're depressed. I went to see a doctor. He originally diagnosed me with ADHD, which I thought was mental. Um and then he put me on antidepressants, which actually made it worse because I just had these massive highs and come downs. And then eventually, after numerous meltdowns, I suppose I'd call them, after numerous breakdowns, he ended up diagnosing me with bipolar disorder. Um, and again, at that point, my wife was at a fucking wit's end. You think about this, I've got a two-year-old and a newborn. My daughter was born there. And she's got a fucking 34-year-old fucking kid as well. Do you know what I mean? She's yeah, a lot to yeah, deal yeah. with. She's got no friends there. She's got no family there. She's like, and in Spain, they don't really treat bipolar disorder. It's not really a thing, which is interesting to me. It's not really a thing there. So she was like, we need to move home. And I was like, I get it. Yeah, we need to move home. You need support. I need some. I need more help. Um, I probably need to be around people again because I wasn't really around anybody. My mates would come out every now and again. We'd get it on the sesh for the weekend and then I'd be on my own again. Just really struggling, mate. Mm. And when I moved home, the challenge that I had was it was now easier to go out on the booze because I'm back with all my old mates again. It was now easier to get coke because I only knew one dealer in Marbella. I know loads here. So it was it was just, it got a bit messy. And then I suppose, uh, we came home, I think, in around about the September that year, maybe before that. And then December, it kind of gets to the point where I'm, it, it's, it's gone off the rails. By then though, mate, I'd seen like every shrink, every mental health nurse, every, if it had an ist on the end, I'd seen them. Mm. And not resonated with any of them. They all kind of said the same shit. And was that NHS or everything? Just everything. NHS, private. Oh wow. Um my wife was funding shit. Well, I was funding shit. My wife was booking appointments and just making me go there. Everyone. Yeah. I mean the NHS back then, twenty fourteen, it wasn't really a thing. My wife, the, the best support I got was actually a few uh, probably a week, I think it was six days after I had the the the, the meltdown of all meltdowns. The most help I got was off the Suicide Watch team, who literally they may as well have moved into my house because they were fucking that worried. So 17th of December that year, I'd been on the sesh for like three days. And my wife, it's weird this because I get asked all the time. On that day there, 17th of December, my wife was the one that stopped me from jumping off a cliff. I, I actually, if I'm being honest, I don't know if I would have. Mm. I think it may have just been a massive cry for help, but who knows? Yeah, when yeah. you're at rock bottom like that, there's no logic. And, There's and, no logic in it whatsoever. And the thing is, like, if, if you look at suicide rates in men, and men the the age you would have been then, mm-hmm. what, 30, 34, 34, yeah, 34. Um, that 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 was a massive market. People are doing it. People are doing it. Is it uh, a man every two hours yeah. kills himself in the UK? Yeah, mad. So mad. You don't know, do you? And it's mad because logically, I've got everything. Yeah, I've got everything. Logically, I've got everything. No money, fucking worries. No time worries. The, the life that I thought I wanted, right? Yeah. And and my wife had actually followed me that day. Everyone was like, well, why was your wife there? Did you tell her you were going to kill yourself? You clearly didn't plan on doing it. Obviously, you get all them shitty comments. I'm like, listen. The dickheads. She followed me every time I'd leave the fucking house because yeah. she never knew if I was going to come back. She never knew I was going to go missing. I turned my phone off for days at a time. I remember one day, not so long before that, maybe the October, the police ended up coming out looking for me. I was in the fucking sea. Just needed to get in the sea. It was a strange fucking moment that I... Um, and my memory of that time is actually not that good, you know. It's really yeah, weird. Yeah. My memory's not great because I'm all over the place. And you're just in pure emotion. You're in just a pure emotional state. And uh, the words that she said me said to me, and this is an evidence of the, of the logic thing, she said, think about the kids then. She said, think about the kids. I was like, well, yeah, I am. You'd be better off without me. Because you think that. Mm-hmm. You do think yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. horrible to be around. I don't want to spend time with them. They get on my fucking nerves. I don't want to play with them. I just want to be on my own. I just want to be on my own. 
and I said there'd be better of them. And she said, and this is, I don't know where she got this from, but it was it, it woke me up like at a level that I can't even explain. She said, well, think about them growing up then as those kids who dad killed himself. Mm-hmm. And that, I'm like, well, I'm not willing for that to happen. I love me kids. But party is like, I love me kids, which is why they're better off without me. But when she said that, I was like, shit. Yeah. You're right. Like, they'd have to carry that guilt with them for the rest of their lives. No matter what I said, no matter what fucking note I left, they'd grow up thinking they weren't good enough. And yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't willing for that to happen. So, um, yeah, and then that led me on a mad journey of let's do something here. Let's do something here. I remember also a week later, actually, I say that woke me up, but on Christmas Eve, which is essentially seven days later, mm. I'm out drinking again. And I remember two things happening in those couple of days again. I remember Christmas Eve being so pissed and full of sniff that I couldn't build a train set for me, son. My dad had to come and help. And my dad looked at me. He didn't say anything, but he looked at me in a way which was, as f- this is fucking embarrassing, son. Like, he didn't say anything. And then the next day as well, this lady called Donna. Donna was on the community support team, which is basically Suicide Watch. Mm-hmm. She'd been coming out to see me once a week for fucking weeks. Asked me how I was getting on. And, and this one day, this Christmas day, the next day, my, my wife and kids were actually at my in-laws because I was they couldn't be around me because I was so fucking volatile, mate. Horrible. Couldn't handle any noise. Noise used to fucking send me loopy. Noise used to fucking send me loopy. And I remember this lady, Donna, I'm hungover on Christmas Day and she's looking at me like, I'm like, sh- sh- you think about this, she's at work on Christmas Day. She's having to deal with me. And the thing is, she wasn't just dealing with me being suicidal. She was dealing with me causing me own problems. Mm. She was almost like, she went, you hungover, aren't you? And, and she just looked at me over the top of my glasses, like my mum used to when I was a kid, over the top of my glasses. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, shit, yeah, I'm I'm fucking around here. And then that led me just on a mad journey. I, I mean, I say lucky, but I'd sacrifice everything to make a lot of money back then. And and I was fortunate enough, I keep saying that word, but I built this business where I had enough disposable income where I could invest, I could travel, I could go on seminars, I could hire mentors and that. And then it just led me on a journey of, I don't know. And then obviously I dropped that video. No intention of doing anything with it. In fact, I'd sat on that video for 18 months. I'd sat on it. I was. Yeah. I made it. Back then I had a supplement company that I sold in 2015. And I made this video at the end of the day of actually shooting marketing videos. Marketing videos from a marketing company that I had. Uh, that's where I met James Smith. He joined that program. And a marketing video for a supplement company that I had. And at the end of the day I was like, mate, can you... I sent me a mate Mark. I said, can you... Just set the camera up over there. I've got something I need to see. And I just spat what came from my heart. No script, no rec- no thing. Not even, I hadn't even planned on doing it, never mind fucking planning what I was going to say. And then I sat in it for 18 months and people get, kept getting on my case. Mark kept getting on my case about when are you going to drop this video? And my friend Chris had seen it. So Mark had sent it, my other friend Chris, Chris Brown. And Chris edited it and just fucking, he was running Facebook ads for my other business at the time and he just posted it. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And then... Two things happened. One, people said you should have jumped. Should have jumped. If you're that weak, you should have jumped. Uh, and, I mean, that's something we we can come on to because mad thing. F- what and then is other wrong people, with society. The other people were. That's a brave thing to do. I needed to hear that. Yeah, I really. I'm. It's like I needed to see that video today. Yeah, yeah. And that obviously led me stumble into doing what I do now. Yeah, yeah. I think the big thing for me is that that's really hard to do for a man mm-hmm. men like us because for for the worlds we are apart we are fairly similar mm-hmm. um you know we're we're, the, we're a similar age or mm-hmm. are you 41 42 42 yeah 42. I'm, for, I'm 42 I'm 43 this year yeah me too um we're both like jiu jitsu mm-hmm. we're both passionate about I don't like it anymore no you don't like <laughs> it anymore well to be fair i haven't i haven't rolled for about 18 months well, do you know what's mad mate the night that i did it so i've had a love hate relationship with jiu jitsu this year right <laughs> I've quit once, right, for a week, right? <laughs> and then I went back and I just started feeling, fucking hell, I feel pretty good. I, I, I felt like I was improving and then yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> set, the, the exact role that I was rolling in, I was like, fucking hell, I feel pretty good here. Next thing I know, my fucking arms hanging off. It's meant so because I, jiu-jitsu actually saved me. So a couple of years ago, I, I went through my own my own mental health issues. Mm-hmm. It wasn't major, had a, a, a period of low mood, mm-hmm. um, probably... You could call it depression, um, uh, anxiety. Mm. I stayed at home. My wife and kids, my wife would go to work, my kids would go to school, um, and I would just sit at home and not yeah. do anything. I'd probably go to sleep on the chair. Yeah. Um, 
and I've, I've got a really good friend who's high level um, jujitsu mm. and he, he messaged me and said, oh, you know George who does jujitsu? I, I said, no, I don't know him. He said, yeah, you do. I said, jujitsu George? Yeah, jujitsu no, George. George. Yeah, yeah. He said, George Jitsu. He said, surely you must know him. And I'd kickbox with this guy for for a, a, quite a few years. Yeah. Um, and he says, yeah, yeah, he's been, he's been around for years. Anyway, he set up his own jujitsu in Wainfleet. Mm -hmm. Do you fancy coming along? And I said, yeah. And I only said, yeah, because I knew if I didn't say yes to him, I wouldn't go. Yeah. But because I committed to it, I would have to go. And the day that I was due to go, I hadn't been out of the house properly for, for weeks. Oh, shit. And fucking anxiety. I felt sick on the day that I was going. Mm -hmm. I felt physically sick. And my wife's amazing. Like, mm -hmm. my kids are amazing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're so supportive. And obviously, my wife being a mental health nurse, yeah. like, she was a big help. She knows what's up. She yeah. knew, yeah. But I needed to get out. I needed to do something for yeah. me. And I you know what? I love that because your wife. A lot of people would expect <coughs> their wife to save them. You knew yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You knew that she wasn't going to save you. No, she no. can't save you. No, no. We yeah. and and she would she would be supportive and she would yeah. help and she would give me guidance, but she yeah. would tell me what what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. Like no one, no one can save you, and you know that. Mm -hmm. Like you, you've got you've got to have it up here. You've got to be able to tell yourself. Mm -hmm. So I went along, and the first night, and I remember fucking winding myself up all the <laughs> way there. And when I got there, I absolutely loved it. And when I got home, Missy went, "How was it?" I was up here, mate. I was buzzing. I, it was the biggest high I'd ever had in my life. And Paul, you know what I first thought? And I could never get to sleep after. Yeah, yeah. Could never get to sleep no. after. I was wired at the fucking moon. Yeah. All that adrenaline and that. And I, it was always late as well. So we, I, it was I, always, it is, you know, I was getting home at half nine at night. Like that. Do you know what's mad, right? This is my fault, right? I'm, I get like that after a nighttime class, but if I do it early morning, I'm fucked the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. So you must get that buzz, and then obviously it wears off. Yeah, yeah. And when it wears off, and you've done it in the morning, I'm like, Ooh. well, the next the next morning, I get up and up like that. I, my, uh, stiff Richard. My back's fucked, and uh, my feet are fucked, and I'm. But, uh, but the point is, guys like us, we don't talk about mental health. It's not it's not a thing we're supposed to talk about because it it shows weakness. Like we go in the gym and lift weights and choke people out and. What, what do you mean you're struggling? And drink, and, aye, and get brag about how many pints you can drink. Yeah, yeah. and when I was, so when I was a prison officer, uh, I was a prison officer for seven years, mm. and you couldn't have a mental illness. You couldn't be depressed. You couldn't be anxious, because if you were, then one of the old school screws would probably fill you in. Yeah. You get chucked in a cell for the day. Stop, stop being weak. Stop, yeah. stop being a, a wimp. Yeah. And I genuinely thought, I mean, even when I come out of the prison service in, what, 2014, maybe, I think it was, mm. I, I I still believe that men don't cry, yeah. men don't show their emotions, men don't you don't you don't tell your wife you love her in public in front yeah. of people because that's oh yeah. no don't don't be a pussy. Yeah. And I genuinely still believed that back yeah. then. Yeah. And I think that's a massive contributor. And when I said you know when I sat on that video for eighteen months, the reason I sat on it because I was scared about what people would think. Yeah, I was scared about what my mates would think. I mean fucking hell, mate! I'm talking about cocaine. I'm talking about boozing. I'm talking about porn. Yeah. I'm talking about anxiety. I'm talking about suicidal thoughts. I mean, fucking hell. My parents have seen it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? My parents, yeah, yeah. I didn't want my dad to see it. I didn't want, not because of whether you would call me a pussy, but just because I was like, what if he thinks I'm, not if he's embarrassed by it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, But that's a similar story, isn't it? To, to one that, so I've listened to your, your book on the way up here. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got a new one coming. Uh, yeah, I've seen, oh, I've, I've, I've there's, there's a few bits about... How many have you got out at the well, moment? Well, I've got one that got published. You've got the, the audio one? The audio one's the one I got published with Harper Collins. Yeah. The other two are self-published. Yeah, okay. So, so I've got Fucking Unstartable, which I wrote in 2018. Yeah. And I've got How to End Self-Sabotage. It's basically just audio. Yeah, Just yeah. audio. Yeah. Yeah, so the one the one I've listened to this morning, it tells a lot of stories about... The one where James does the intro. Yeah, yeah. where James does the intro. And I, yeah. I, I didn't realise he did the intro, so I... I Downloaded. I actually paid for it. I didn't do it on Audible for free, on, so I, I paid for it properly. I mean, I get fuck all, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but I thought, you know, if I'm going to come up here and I'm going to speak to someone, I've yeah. got to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I love it. Um, and then when I listened to the the preview, I was like, that's fucking James Smith's voice. <laughs> What's that? What have I got? <laughs> and how I think, posh does he sound? Uh, yeah, <laughs> he goes from being you go from this really posh guy to this guy you can't even understand what he's fucking saying. Yeah, man, so, that book took so long, you know, because because of my accent. We're sitting doing an audio book, yeah, yeah. and people are like, "That's not how you say that word." I mean, I fucking say it like yeah, that. That's how I say it. There was one word I remember. Innes, bless her. Innes was. I said the word. Um, what was the word? The amygdala. Yeah. The part of your brain responsible for fear. She was like, yeah. "It's amygdala." I'm like, "No, it's not." <laughs> not where I she come like, from. She says amygdala. So I'm not saying it like that. And I said to her, and she's an older lady. She, was, I've never seen her go so red in my life. I said, "Well, do you say clitoris?" <laughs> She was like, Paul! I was like, you say clitoris, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, that was, it was basically, if I'm listening, if you want me to say amygdala, I'm also going to say clitoris. 
It's like some kind of dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, to be fair, when he said that, you'll yeah. have to get used to the accent. Like yeah. My my wife's originally from up this way. Yeah. Um, she hasn't got the accent anymore. She lost the accent. Oh, really? But um, her her grandparents did have, and right. obviously I've, I was based in Catrick, so the, yeah. I thought, no, I'll be fine. I'll be yeah, fine yeah, with yeah. the accent. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm, I'm listening to that, and there mm-hmm. was a guy that you were talking about who split up with his wife, and he, was, he had a list of people that he would. John. Yeah, he was yeah. too embarrassed. Actually, he's not. His real name's John, but yeah. in the book we have to change the name. Yeah, but they didn't yeah, even yeah. want to. The lads were like, no, I want to keep your name in. But legally, Harper Collins were like, no, we'll change them just in case. Yeah, yeah. Just in case anything, because anything could happen as a result of that. Like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, so he he was saying that he was too embarrassed to tell people mm-hmm. um, because of what, what they were what thinking. They were and thinking, it's, the yeah. same, it's the same yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's the same response. And yeah. this is something that I've been led to believe is something that I know you absolutely hate. And I didn't realise how much until I listened to this book. <laughs> I was led to believe that this is imposter syndrome because I have this thing now mm-hmm. where... Um, I, I, when I started to be a PT, I thought I've got a little bit of a belly on me, mm-hmm. but I'm fit. I'm, I'm healthy. I know my shit. I can lift and I can train. Mm-hmm. I don't look like a PT, but I am probably a lot better than a lot of PTs who are shredded and ripped. Mm-hmm. But I thought the guys that I know who are super fit, mm-hmm. what are they going to be thinking of me? Mm-hmm. Are they going to, they're going to look at me and go, yeah, the ones that are never going to pay you money. Yeah, you're not good enough to be a PT. <laughs> the ones that you couldn't help anyway. Yeah, yeah. And and it's it's in, and I know it's in here, but I still, until a couple of weeks ago, yeah. probably even last week, when I heard you talking about impos- uh, imposter syndrome and how it's not real, I've I've said to people... Someone made that name up? Yeah, I, I don't doubt. Because uh, when I ask people to describe it, what they're describing is discomfort. Yeah, yeah. And do you know what? I don't mind labels if they empower you. But I can't see how it, how labeling yourself as having like it's some kind of disease. Mm. By the way, who who fucking diagnosed you with it? What cream do you take? What tablets do you take? What yeah, cream? Yeah, who did you catch yeah. it off? Right? Yeah, you describe yourself as having something. I can't see how that empowers you. I can only see it acting as a crutch, yeah, or an excuse or a reason, yeah, for not pushing yourself beyond that discomfort. Yeah, yeah. And the the truth is, right? What you're gonna understand is the discomfort is feedback that you're growing. Yeah. So imposter syndrome is feedback that you are growing because growing sometimes is painful. Like think about, like if you, you, they kind of want to know that they're good enough, but it's like if you go in the gym and you know that you can lift the weight for 10 reps, it's not the right weight, is it? Yeah, yeah. If you know you can lift it for 10 reps, you're not getting stronger. No, no. You've got to lift a heavier weight. Yeah. There has to be a little bit of self-doubt. Because has to be a little, oh, there's, oh, there's no point. Yeah, yeah. That's so... I can understand what it is. It makes sense to me. Yeah. But I'm like, what, how does that help you? Yeah. It doesn't, does it? Because if you let it, if you let it in your mind and let it yeah. rule you. It sounds like a disease. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing is, like... It's self-created. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it's, it's almost, it feels like a reaction. Your mind telling you that this is going to be difficult. So you need to make a reason up why you're not going to succeed. Yeah. And this, the, the whole YouTube you're thing. Fucking, mate, you're bang on. Yeah. This, That's exactly what it is. Yeah. The whole yeah. YouTube thing. So I started YouTube a couple of years ago mm-hmm. to do um, private fitness videos for a couple of my friends that yeah, I didn't yeah. live near. Yeah. Right. And I would create the link and I'd send it to them and they would watch it. Yeah. 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 And then I did a couple of shitty podcasts, just me sat in my gym talking shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and yeah. they were probably terrible and I'll cringe if I watch them. Yeah. Um, and it kind of, it kind of started to grow from there. Yeah. And we started thinking, me and my wife's life, we were dedicated to helping people. Mm. I'm not, it sounds really, it sounds really stupid. I don't give a shit about money. Mm. I've, I've had money. I've been poor. I've been well off. Mm. I've been unhappy both times. I've been mm. happy both times. So mm. money doesn't make any difference. What really drives us is helping people and knowing that we've influenced people's lives. And I, got, I even got a message yesterday from a guy who said he's been watching my live fitness videos that I do on a Monday mm. and I've inspired him to give up drinking. Amazing. He's, he's been a drinking, he's been drinking for years. Amazing. Right. And yeah, to me, fuck, I posted that. I haven't posted anything, anything else, yeah. like any of my other videos and stuff. They just yeah. go out. But this was like, look, this is why we do this uh. for this guy. And he's not the first, you know, the last mm. 10 weeks, 12 weeks, we've had so much feedback like that. Mm. And it, I'm up here when that happens. I'm mm. absolutely buzzing. Mm. So it, it's, it's never been about money. Yeah. It's been about growth. But then I'm sat there thinking... There's these guys that are on 80,000 subscribers and we can't even hit a a thousand. Mm. We're obviously rubbish. I'm not good enough. We're not good enough to do this. There's a reason for it. Do you know what? I don't have a problem. Like people say I'm not good enough. I'm like, well, for what? Mm. Good enough for what? 
And then my, my favorite question is, well, how would you know you were good enough? And sometimes I believe I embrace that feeling of not being good enough because what it shows me is, okay, well, where can I get better? Mm. What do I need to do to get better? Like that, I find that quite exciting. Like the same thing. Yeah, yeah. If you know that you can lift that weight for 10 reps, it's the wrong fucking weight. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get stronger, you have to pick up the heavier weight. And that's the great thing about not being good enough. You know what the weight is that you can't lift. So yeah. therefore, you've got a goal. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. therefore, I can work towards the goal. If you knew you were good enough, you wouldn't try and get any better. Yeah. And, you, and you've got <laughs> You know to- what I mean? And life is, about, life is about growth and it'll always fucking find a way to remind you that it's about growth because the opposite of growth is comfort. Yeah, yeah. And trust me, the moment you think you're comfortable, something will happen that makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. So the more you can accept, I mean, I was thinking about this, mate, I've had a mad week this week. So obviously, I tore my pec Friday. Yeah. Um, couldn't get seen. Still haven't had a fucking MRI. And I'm private, by the way. This is, mate, I pay, <laughs> mate, and I must pay six figures tax easy a year, right? Six figures tax, right? So I can't get an NHS. I can't even get a GP appointment for two weeks. Never mind an MRI. So anyway, I can't get the MRI. Monday, um, my insurance company ring me and said, we can't insure your car. I was like, well, you already have. They're like, well, we don't insure these type of cars. They're like, you already have. I'm insured. They're like, you need to cancel it. I was like, okay. You need to pay the cancellation fee. I'm like, I'm not canceling it. You are. I'm not paying a fee for something that you're doing. So anyway, I was like, okay. They were like, okay, you don't have to pay the fee. And now I can't get you out on this in shit on this car, right? Because the value or something. Then the next day, I still got my old car. And they're like, and I got the final warning on the tax. You can see, I'm not good with cars, right? Got the final warning on the tax. I was like, Kath, can you sort this tax out for us? She went and sorted. MOTs ran out. Fuck. (laughs) Ring the garage where I get the MOT. Hey, Paul, uh, we can get you in, but next Wednesday, when I'm on holiday. Okay, fine, okay. Then yesterday, I'm on the way here. My wife said, where are you? I said, I'm almost at the office. I'm walking in. Get me, obviously, keep me step count high so I don't get fucking fat. And then uh, she said, my car's broke down. (laughs) car's broke down. So I've had a mad week this week. But when I look at it, I don't get too emotional about it because last week, I had an amazing week. And I know that that's all going to balance out eventually. So last week was too comfortable. This week... Pure discomfort and, all and I fucking think, week. I think this this is something that's really powerful because I obviously I've been tapping into a few bits that you do. I've watched a couple yeah. of podcasts, um, you and James, and I've listened to the book, and mm-hmm. I, I think I've got my shit together. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I, I work really hard. Mm-hmm. I've got a Monday to Friday nine to five yeah. manager's job. Yeah. I've got a PT business. Yeah. Um, we've got the podcast and the yeah. YouTube stuff. Yeah, wife, kids, dog, fucking, yeah. and I'm sat listening to your book. And I'm like. I haven't got my shit together at all. <laughs> I mean, the, the good news is neither of us. Fucking and every time I think I have, <laughs> life fucking reminds me that I haven't. Yeah, yeah. Last week, I was like, oh, I've had an amazing week. We've got all these new people in the program. It's blown up. I've just got this off. I had to go and speak here. A couple of other things happened where I was like, fucking hell, let's go. We're making great progress on the book. We've got two companies in right. We've got two publishers interested. I'm like, shit, this is amazing. And then this week happened. But the thing is, old me would have went all victim. Oh, why is this always happened to me? It's always yeah. it's always me. Why is this happening? I wish this would be better. And why is this going wrong? And don't get me wrong. Sometimes I visit there mm-hmm. for a millisecond. Like yesterday, they rang me. Finally got an MRI booked. Um, they rang me and they said, oh, actually, Paul, I'm a, I'm a, our MRI is not powerful enough, so we can't do it. What, after I've just paid quite a lot of money to have that done so I lost my shit for a little bit and I just walked home by the time I'm 10 minutes down the road I'm like oh fucking hell let's just get it handled yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. like you you avoid many people are trying to avoid discomfort and they're not uncomfortable anyway yeah. do you know what I mean you ask someone that, that we avoid discomfort and we don't seek out growth you got somebody that avoids the discomfort of exercise yeah. avoids the discomfort of eating a bit better they end up with the discomfort of being fat and ill yeah and I've got that. I've got that written down actually on my, on my little note to talk about avoiding, yeah. avoiding discomfort. The avoiding thing that you're avoiding, difficult. you end up with anyway. Yeah, yeah. You avoid a difficult conversation; it's going to come back to bite you on the ass. Yeah. You're in business; you avoid the uncomfortable selling part of it. You end up with no fucking business. Yeah. You can't, so you may as well be like, right, I'm uncomfortable here. I'm. I don't feel like I'm good enough. So how can I get better? Yeah. How can I lift that heavier weight? What do I need to do to lift that heavier weight? Or am I just going to avoid lifting the weight altogether? Well, one thing I know is you're not going to stay at the same weight. You're going to get fucking weaker. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so no, absolutely. If I, let's just say I want to do a 100 kilo bench press. It would be fucking wonderful, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 10 kilo <laughs> bench press would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just say I'm shooting for the 100 kilo bench press. And right now I'm on 50. And I'm like, oh, 100 seems too heavy. I'm too far away from that. So I'm not going to lift at all. Yeah. I'm not going to stick at 50 kilo bench press, am I? 
I'm gonna fucking get weaker and weaker yeah. and weaker. Yeah. yeah, and you just never. Then you're just not gonna ever achieve. No, and you end anything. up in the of being able to lift fuck all, not even your own body weight. Yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of stuff to to improve, mm-hmm. you've got to you've got to go out of that comfort zone. I I, I, speak to. To, I speak to so many people and so many people that I've trained and um like the the one to ones and stuff I do in the gym and I always tell them I'm gonna be honest with them. I'm not gonna bullshit them. Yeah. This is gonna be hard. It's marginal, Paul, because the comfort zone's not a thing either. Yeah, it's completely made up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's completely made up. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? it's mad. It's it's a. I suppose when you say when you talk about comfort zone, yeah. it's plateau. Yeah, it's staying in that one position. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 only it, staying in your. Do you know same the way I like to look at it, Paul? You know, as I say, it's not raising your standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Getting yeah, out yeah. your comfort zone just means I'm going to raise my standards. Yeah, yeah. And when you raise your standards, you tend to get a different result. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I I tell I, I tell clients. You're gonna. It's gonna be hard. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be easy. It's mm-hmm. probably gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt tomorrow mm-hmm. after you've done this leg day. You're mm-hmm. not gonna be able to work for three fucking days, <laughs> yeah. and you're gonna have to cut out some of the shit that you're eating, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's not gonna be easy. Mm-hmm. I know it's not gonna be easy because I struggle to do it myself, mm-hmm. and, and I know you've said you know you've, it you like fucking ice cream and stuff, it and it's Chris. so oh man, Chris. it's so it's so hard to do. Yeah, I hate but it. if you don't do it, mm-hmm. then not only are you not going to achieve anything, you're going to get worse. You got to ask, I think, what you're willing. To do and what you're not willing to do. Like, yeah. if I'm not, I've realized I'm not willing to do what's required to get a six pack. Yeah, I mean, either. So I'm not willing to do that. I'm willing yeah. to do maybe the next level down. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm willing to get to a fighting weight. Yeah. I'm willing to stay there. I'm willing to do the work required to get that. So it's almost like if I'm not willing to do the work, then I must be willing to put up with the results of not doing the work. Yeah, yeah. What you yeah. get is people unwilling to do the work and then say they're unwilling to stay the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I've- they complain about it. It's like, well, you can't. Have, you kind of can't have your cake and eat. I mean, you can but yeah, do you get what I'm saying? You it's can't like, lose weight if you're nah, eating it. <laughs> nah, the <laughs> moment that I became, because me, back in 2014, I knew that I needed to do something different. Yeah. I kind of knew what I needed to do. Yeah. But I was unwilling to do the work. Yeah. Therefore, I had to admit that I was willing to stay the same. The moment that I became unwilling to stay the same for a fucking moment longer yeah. was the moment that I became willing to do the work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that's, that's a big part of... of of it for anyone and I, I spoke to someone um it, it was just a couple of months ago um and they weren't a client they were just someone i knew and they were talking about um losing weight and getting healthier and their mood and their their, their all their illnesses and and i said but you, all you're doing is telling me what all your problems are mm-hmm. like there is things you can do you can improve mm-hmm. you, you could eat healthier i eat fine i said you don't because like i've seen what you eat you don't eat fine you eat like shit yeah. no i don't and they started lift, lift, listing everything they also eat. your body and your energy that's what I like about a body and hate about it. Yeah, yeah. It gives you great feedback. Yeah, yeah. It knows. <laughs> it knows. <laughs> like your body doesn't lie to you. No, your body exactly. never lies. And 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 I said, but yesterday I've just my body here. keeps reminding me that I'm 42. <laughs> No matter how many times, oh, well, I don't feel 42. Yeah. My body's like, you fucking do you, feel 42, are. mate. Yeah, well, yeah. My mind's like, I don't feel 42. My body's like, well, I fucking do, yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Feet, back, shoulders, <laughs> peck, pecs. Peck, uh, Has it been both? Was it the other one Paul, last I told the last one last time. Oh, uh, uh, it's a different tear, though. <laughs> it's not the same tear. The first time I did it, the muscle came away from the tendon. Yeah. So that I get sewn back together. Yeah, this yeah. time, I think the muscle's off the bone. Has it left it kind of indented or has it gone back? This one, not so much. This one's just swollen. As a Really swollen. Yeah. So that actually gives me a little bit of hope. Yeah, it feels yeah. different. It felt worse when I did it. But since I've done it, it feels totally different than that one. Like there's some things I just couldn't do. Like I couldn't contract the pec yeah. at all. Yeah, this yeah. one I kind of contracted. Yeah, one of my, it's one just of my certain f- things that really hurts when I do it. One of my friends is a uh, power lifter. He's, mm. he's a bit older now, but he tore his pec uh, probably 15 years ago. Yeah. And it left, like, it, I, I mean, he's got quite a big chest. Yeah, I look like I've got two armpits. Yeah, you do, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Two yeah. armpits, it's mad. Oh. My friend Paul Alima's got the same two armpits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, it, is it as strong, though? Have you got the strength back in it? Or? I've got the strength back in it. It just gets a bit, like, the whole shoulder just feels a bit fucking, like, knotted up. Yeah, it's just yeah. the, the motion, and it's not that good, but it's strong. It's not as strong as it was. So there's this, there's, an, there's a side control escape that I love, yeah. and I can, I need both hands to do it on one side. I can yeah, do it with me. Le- yeah. Well, actually, it's, I'm not going to be able to do it at all now. I might need yeah. a new technique. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, so there's your positive. You can uh, find you're going to find new a, technique, a new uh, technique. A new out technique. Out of having it done. Uh, <laughs> or just stop fucking letting people pass me guard over yeah, that. That's, I, do you know what? I, I was never very good, to be yeah, fair. Yeah. And I just used to go, I like rolling about a bit. Yeah, I've been training since 2018. I'm yeah, still fucking shite. I, I, um, because obviously when we was in the prison service, there was a lot of restraints and a yeah. lot of um, uh, sweaty men cuddling each other for mm. not so much for fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was normally because someone was trying to assault you. Yeah. But I, I, I missed that physicality. I did miss that. It's really strange. I think it's a good thing for you to know. Like my kids, my kids, none of them, neither of them train jujitsu now. Yeah, I push them a bit hard, but 
the anything that is physical are very comfortable in that situation. Like yeah, his son yeah. loves boxing. Yeah. In rugby, he was good. He's not fast runner, but he was good quite quickly because he wasn't scared to fucking get get stuck in, yeah. which is really cool. He'll end up back at it, I think. Yeah. He's, uh, he's he's twelve now, so he's at a weird age as well. Twelve's a weird age. You're not a teenager. Yeah. But you're not a kid and yeah. you're not an adult. It's a bit weird. My son's just turned thirteen. Ah, uh, it's a key awkward age, isn't it? Yeah, My daughter yeah. just got awkward for her because she was good. Yeah. And other lads that were her age, eight, didn't want to roll with her. Yeah. And then other girls, she was better than them. So they didn't want to roll with her either. So she just got really awkward. Just getting little boobies and that. And yeah. A bit weird. Yeah. But he's the same. But he keeps double legging me or arm dragging me or do you know what I mean? Yeah. And taking me back and that one. He'll just take me back when I'm just sitting there and he'll try and strangle me. Yeah. I'm like, you're coming back, you. Yeah. I don't yeah. say it, but you'll you'll definitely come back. Like yeah. and I, I think it's fucking great for them anyway. I'd love to get my son back into it. So both both my kids did kickboxing from a young age. Yeah. In fact, my daughter started when she was three. Oh, really? Um, my lad was four. Yeah. Um, and they both did kickboxing and then that that ended where they were and then we went to another kickboxing club yeah. and then COVID hit and yeah. we couldn't do anything yeah, like that anymore. Back, uh, and then they lost interest. Uh, like they, my little boy went to grammar school and started getting interested in football. Yeah. And so they, My son's into it now. Yeah. Mate, he fucking drags me all over. I'm going to Man United against Chelsea tonight. Oh yeah. Oh, support, one of my clients is going to that. I support neither team. Do you know? Neither does he just likes going. Yeah. He loves games. He loves live matches. So this year, mate, fucking hell, I've been uh, almost every Sunderland away game and yeah. we've got season tickets to Sunderland yeah. I've been Rangers Celtic I've been at Arsenal twice I've been at Eintracht Frankfurt I've been at, actually I've been at Rangers Celtic at, Gla at Ibrox and the cup semi-final at Hamden yeah. which was wild the other week randomly went to Man City against Leeds he just loves going to these games yeah, and yeah. I love it as well it's great for me yeah, yeah. so he's developed that interest in football but I think he'd be back at Jiu Jitsu yeah, yeah. actually prison I've just remembered it. I'm speaking in a prison in Belfast next month oh, yeah. like do you want to do this thing in Belfast in a prison I was like do I fuck and then I was oh, like good. actually I feel like I could because the only reason I didn't want to do it because I've never been in prison Yeah. and I don't like I don't like to I mean I'm not going to pretend I have but it's I'm used to speaking to people that I've got some experience where they're at. Yeah, so yeah, whether it's yeah. a business event and they can't get out of their own way, whether it's a fitness business event where I've ran many successful ones before, yeah. whether it's a mental health event where it's easy, but a prison, I'm like... It's, it's a different world. And they're like, mate, do you think they don't have mental health, health issues? Like, You don't have to have been in prison to fucking relate to someone. No. No, they're just people. Uh, they're just people. And, and uh, that's what a lot of people don't understand when I talk about prisons. And I can't, I, I don't do too much of it because there's a lot of stuff I'm, I can't talk about. Uh, and yeah. they, they tell you that, at the, you know, you get you get certain yeah. orders put on yeah. your D notices that you can't yeah. discuss stuff. Yeah. And then there's some stories that I couldn't discuss yeah, 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 <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd probably get in fucking trouble. Because yeah. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a whole different world. When you yeah. go through that gate, yeah. there's a very small percentage of the population that ever go beyond that gate without yeah. committing a crime yeah. so us people on this side of it there's not strange, very many people yeah, yeah strange, it's very yeah. strange yeah. i just said listen if i can video the talk i'll do it yeah it'll be it'll yeah. be really it'll be really good i don't yeah. know if they'll let you yeah we did um, on the will i just can't video anyone else yeah yeah oh so yeah, if there's any, even do... if there's a back of anyone's head in it's got to be blurred out yeah we had All we right. had a guy come and um, visit when we was in the jail so um obviously you know black sabbath are back in the day black sabbath's guitarist was zach wilde and zach wilde's now uh black label society right. do, you, do you know nah, 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 so, nah, black, nah. so he's, he's a he's a massive deal in america yeah. but one of our prison officers used to be um a roadie for black sabbath in the day so he knew zach wilde and zach wilde come over was a little a little jail in fucking grantham in lincolnshire right. and there's zach wilde and his whole entourage and Karang come and no. they, they did all the pictures and we were sat in, I was sat in the, the chapel and there was about there was about 25 prisoners and about 35 prison officers because <laughs> they just because all the officers just like yeah we're going to this like really? they all went That's mad. And, and it was nice but they they were the same they could take loads of pictures yeah. but it was just all like the backs of people's heads aye, and aye, it, aye. but it was I'm really interested in it because it's new it's very out of me comfort zone talking about imposter syndrome yeah yeah if there's any situation, I, yeah. if there's any if there's any situation where you could feel like an imposter, it's gonna be that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, obviously, you touched on mental health there. I know yeah. that um, Dieran, I didn't get to see the whole podcast that you did with him. Um, <laughs> I ran out of time, but he he introduced you as the godfather of mental health. I think so. Um, and obviously, mental health is our thing, like health and fitness and nutrition. But we've been pushing more towards well being and mental health. Um, and I guess. I, I want to ask, because you've been through this whole thing, do you think that we do enough in this country at the moment to help people with mental health? Or do you think we're doing too much? Do you think we're... I think we're talking about the wrong shit. Yeah, yeah. I think there's never been more support. Yeah. There's never been more awareness. What does that even do? What is awareness? 
What does that even oh, do? Yeah. And I think there's too much emphasis on, oh, make sure you talk to your mate. And tell him what? Yeah, yeah. What does that do? I think there's never been more support, but I think there needs to... I actually think there needs to be a little bit of a tougher line taken. Because men... I don't think most men do well having smoke blown up their ass and having an arm around the shoulder. I think for some men, that's great. But I think sometimes we need to be told to wake the, f- wake the fuck up. Mm. I, I agree. think sometimes we need that. The challenge is, is that can't be the blanket message because some men won't respond. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. like not everyone's going to respond. Well, that, I think that's the challenge that as a society we struggle with. Yeah. But blowing smoke up the everyone's arse isn't working either. No. Do you know and, what I mean? And there's a very fine line between telling somebody to wake up yes. and telling somebody to man up. Yes. Because they're two very different things. They're very different. Because I, I hate the term man up. Other than, like, women hate it because it sounds very fucking sexist. Yes. Like, what what even does that mean? I, th- I think it's, a, it's almost a... You need to take some responsibility for this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The problem with that is people think... The, the the confuse I think taking responsibility with taking like blame and fault, yeah. but you don't end up in any of those situations by accident. No, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no. There I are things agree. that you've done, the things that you've thought that ultimately have led you where you are. Like this, the way you feel is usually a result of an, an experience. Yeah, yeah. Or the way you feel is a result of your habits. Normally, no one wants to talk about that. I think, I think the difficulty is is how do you. How do you make it a blanket statement that serves everyone? Yeah, I yeah. think that's... So my problem is, let's do more than, say, just talk. And it's okay to talk and talk to your friend and reach out to your mate and that. I think that's why that's being said, because it's like the other messages could be taken the wrong way. Yeah, I agree. Misconstrued. Yeah, I agree. And I think I I, I never really liked the slogan of it, it's okay to be not okay. Yeah. Um, I always thought, well... Is it? Well, it is, but what's not okay is staying not to okay. To stay in a, not okay. And, and I always thought that that gives you the impression that, yeah. oh, you're not okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah. it's not. Uh, we, we need to be given a message that it's okay for people like me and you to say, I'm struggling, I'm on the edge of a cliff, yes. I, you know, I, I, I need help. Yeah. We shouldn't ever be telling somebody, yeah, don't agree. talk about it. Yeah. Um, but it's a real fine line in this. It is really, because... What we say is when when we talk on on our podcast or on our pre-recorded stuff um, on how to improve your mood, because it's a very different thing between having depression and having low mood. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the th- first things we say is the first thing you got to do is is admit it, is talk to someone, is mm-hmm. tell someone that mm-hmm. that that's a problem because you've actually then you've you've verbalised yes. it, but you can't just stay at let's yeah. talk about it. Yes, and I when agree. when I was struggling, one of the things that the doctor did, they referred me, they, they put me on antidepressants, which I binned off fairly quick because I don't like medication yeah. um, and they referred me through to Steps to Change and it was during lockdown so it was all on Zoom and I'm on this Zoom meeting with about 20 other people and a couple of nurses and they're saying and how's your sleep uh, and how's your nutrition I mean, and they're all right questions for some uh, but- <laughs> Uh, come on, man. Like, come on. Uh, and, and I think some of it was good because some of it I was going, yeah, actually, um, I'm sleeping in the day. Like, my wife's going to work, my kids are going to school and I'm going How's to sleep, sleep in the well, day. Well, that's all I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm fucking sleeping Actually, it's all amazing. The time. It's amazing, aye. Yeah, yeah. Aye. And how's your nutrition? Well, it's shit because I'm asleep all the time and I'm not fucking eating anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is there is that fine line of uh, of how we're going to, how we're going to get the message out there. Yeah. And also, I think not there's a, I think trendy. there's a, the, the other fine line that I quite like, you know, Paul, is this or that that I've been thinking about quite a lot is this line of, I think partly, you kind of want to know that you're not alone, yeah, yeah, but then you don't want to get caught up in this environment where there's just loads of people feeling sorry for each other, yeah, 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 feeling yeah. sorry for themselves. I think yeah. that's got to. I, I don't quite like that. I think there has to be more action. Yeah. People show them what to do. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just talking about, okay, what are you going to do now? Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do different? Because it's a clear indicator that, and that's the, the, the I don't want to say the good thing about depression and anxiety, right? But the good thing about depression and anxiety is they're alarm clocks. Yeah. They're an alarm clock that something has to change. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah. Like, how you want to, whether you want to wake up or not, it's up to you. So it's like, right, you, 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 you've, you've, you're depressed, you're low mood, you're anxious, you're overwhelmed, whatever it is, what are you going to do different? Yeah, yeah. And and I think people have got to want that change, haven't they? And I, mm-hmm. I, I, it's been said before, like, mm-hmm. it's all well and good 
Do you know what? James Smith put it perfect mm. right, when he said about the, the Pokemon cards, Pokemon mm. cards and mental health. Everyone's trying to trump each other yeah. because a lot of people don't want to change. A lot of people want that sympathy. A lot of people want I that. Agree one million percent. A lot of people want that. And, and I find I, I have it's conversations. their way of feeling significant. Yeah, absolutely. That's all we want to feel. We want significance. We want love. Yeah. And, for, and me included, by the way, I realized that what I would do, what I was doing was just I wanted attention and affection. Yeah. And I wanted to feel significant. And at that point in my life, I didn't know how else to get it. Yeah, yeah. So I was expressing my need for significance in an unhealthy way. Yeah, yeah. And that's, now I just know how to do it healthily. And it's actually by making other people feel significant. Yeah. That's where I get my significance yeah, from yeah. now. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And, so, so like, th there's, a, there's, a, there's a forum on the internet that's horrible, right? A horrible forum where people basically set up, I shouldn't even really be talking about this because they'll talk about it on there because they all, listen to what we do mm. influencers so-called influencers yeah, yeah. and they set up um anonymous accounts on a forum mm. and basically attack people they basically talk shit about people yeah. it's horrible it's right bad. yeah horrible and i'm like part of me's like imagine your friends imagine you telling your friends that what you like to do through the day and on a light time on your phone is sit on a forum anonymously and call people names yeah it's Troll fucking them. embarrassing imagine telling your kids that yeah yeah horrible Horrible. But they're not even trolling you. They're not doing it to you. They're not doing it on my posts. Because yeah, yeah. I'd fucking love that. Yeah. Come at me then. Let's go. Yeah, Let's me and you have a little dance. Yeah, yeah. Let's me and you have a little dance here. See who yeah. comes off worst. Because you're not going to out banter me. Yeah. Right? You're not going to bullshit a bullshitter. Yeah. Right? I'm going to... You're going to get it. I'm going to... If you want to heckle me, I'm coming right I'll back I'll come you. back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll clap back. I'll yeah. clap back. But I'm like, you're doing it on an anonymous platform. And I got angry about it when I first seen it. Darren lost his shit about it when he seen it, right? Yeah. And the talk, the, honestly, there's one of them was like, like talking about how my friend's two year old daughter looks. Seen the size of her head in that. I'm like, really? Fucking sad cunts. Yeah, I fucking. Anyway, I got angry with it. And then I was like, actually, you know, I feel empathy for them because that's their way of feeling significant. Yeah, yeah. They've got no other anything exciting going around their life. So what they like to do is watch people. This is the worst part. They're watching people that they don't like. Yeah. Who does that? Yeah. It's insane. Like this one woman, I actually know who it is. The, the one that was talking about the drink driving and the, yeah, yeah. that's why I stopped boozing and the, I lived in Marbella because I was broke. Because <laughs> like, that's what everyone does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then my favorite part, she said, and when he's on his podcast, he keeps talking over, I'm like, hang on a second. You hate us but you listen to me podcast. What the fuck's the matter with you? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, that's just their way of feeling important and significant. At some point, I've clearly ignored her or something. Yeah. So YouTube's full of that. Oh, mate, Absolutely TikTok, full. TikTok's the worst. Yeah, yeah. TikTok, fuck me. And Instagram. Fucking, uh, I don't mind Instagram, uh, you know. Honestly, right? I don't mind it. So I, what my, the problem I have with Instagram is it's full of people, hashtagging mental health awareness, mm -hmm who have got absolutely no fucking clue what they're talking about with mental health awareness. And they're doing a post of themselves in the gym, posing in a mirror, hashtag mental health awareness. I'm thinking, oh, that's great. You go into the gym, you're doing everything you need to do. You, you mental health Why awareness. have you got your shirt off? Yeah, like, <laughs> what what has this got to do with mental health? If you was relating it to it, that's fine. But it is just a load of people, or it seems to be a load of people who are just very self-indulgent. And mm -hmm. if I messaged them and said, do you want to come on my mental health podcast and talk about mental health? Wouldn't even respond to me. No. Wouldn't even respond. So you think, well... Crack on. I just it's interesting, you know, I, 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 I was thinking about this, funny enough, yesterday I was walking in the office and I was, I was thinking about this in quite a lot of depth because obviously this is something that's on my mind quite a lot because mm. I'm talking about it so often and writing about it so often. Like One thing that I realised when I was depressed was that I was actually very self-indulgent. Everything was about me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I never thought about anyone else. It was you get caught up in your head and think it's only you with the problem and yeah. everything. Even that, it, everything is your fault, and everyone's out to get you. And your life's this, and your body's this, and it was just like it, it's actually a really weird thing that I think that when you get caught up in this whole it, very self, and, and that's what I realized that when I was depressed, mate, I said I was lonely. I, I'd, I'd cut up so many people out of my life that there was just me, and I was like, maybe I'm the common denominator here. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I say this in my live show. I'm like, okay, let's talk about negative people. If I think you're negative, what does that make me? Yeah. People are like, they don't answer the first. I asked the whole room. A thousand people last year, right? Yeah. I said, if I think you're negative, what does that make me? And they're going, I can smell the, I can smell it in the yeah. air, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'll ask you again. If, if, that, if I think you're negative, what does that make me? And they're like, negative. I'm like, yes, correct. Because we all like to complain. That is what we do. 
that one statement is one of the things. There was a couple of things that, that you said that I was listening to on the way up here. Yeah. And that one statement, that was where, you know, I said earlier, I, I realised I haven't got my shit together. Yeah. That one statement, I went, fuck. It's really interesting, isn't it? And don't yeah. get me wrong, hanging around with people where that's all they do yeah. will get you down. Yeah, yeah. But I'm neither negative or positive. Yeah. Sometimes I'm negative, sometimes I'm positive. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm right in the middle. I learned from, I worked with a guy, Dr. John D. Martini in 2020, amazing guy. He wrote a book called The Values Factor. He's, wrote, he's, he's probably got about fucking 30 books, right? Incredible guy. This course I did with him, we did four days in Dublin in January, right before the fucking lockdown came. Incredible. I've read a bunch of his books, done a bunch of his courses. He spoke at a couple of my events. Amazing guy. And uh, he just has this concept of this neutrality. Like, mm. there's no negative without a positive. Mate, I've, in one video, I've been called too negative and too positive in the same video. <laughs> which, which one am I? Yeah. Tell you which one I am, both. Neither. Yeah, Neutral. Yeah. I'm right in the middle. There's no, like I said there, last week was amazing, this week mental. Yeah, yeah. That's just, that's just. I don't want to say the universe, but that's just me coming yeah, back yeah. in equilibrium, in a balance. There's got to be some negative. There's got to be, because... It has to be, every it, single time. Everyone knows, right? Let's frame that negative. Okay, that's, something happens negative. Okay, what's the upside? But yeah. people lose their shit when they're doing well and then something goes off track. I'm like, well, that's just the negative of the positive. Yeah. We know to frame a negative as positive, but we when something's going well and then something doesn't, that's when we lose our shit because we get caught up in this perception that events are one-sided. They never are. Yeah, yeah. So me, you saying yes to this to drive here, you've had to say no to work or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The downside of interviewing me is I made you drive here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. The downside of me doing this is that I could have been maybe doing something else. Yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And so the, think... the, people don't get this. There's no pleasure without pain. No. There is no pleasure without pain. No. People eat out for pleasure. They end up with the pain of not fucking being in their best shape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, pain yeah. and pleasure go together. Night and day goes together. Darkness and light. All goes to, Everything goes together. And, and, and the way that I figured this out is I also worked with a lady called Byron Katie. He was incredible. Ah, uh, yeah. 2014, incredible. And she has this concept of loving what is. And she says, like, you can't love anything that you don't know both sides of. Mm-hmm. Like, so I can love what is when I find the positive and the negative. I can love what is when I find the pleasure in the pain. There's always pleasure in the pain. I mean, I'm injured. I'm in a lot of pain, but I found pleasure in it. Mm-hmm. Like, well, what, okay, what's the upside of this? I get to heal some other injuries. I get to skip the skydive I was meant to be doing on Tuesday next week. I was <laughs> meant to be in Dubai doing I the skydive that. over the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get to skip. I get to skip that. I get the pleasure of probably more sunbathing than I normally would. Because when the kids are like, "Dad, you want to come in the pool?" No, I can't. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what can you skydive? You, you don't need your shoulder to skydive, man. You can still well, jump I just go plane. in circles. Uh, yeah. You have to have your arms out. Just be fine. Yeah. If you want to go in fucking circles and end up in fucking. Abu Dhabi instead of Dubai, then yeah, let's do it. So you've already done one downward spiral. You don't want to do a literal one. That's a fucking, that's a killer. It's a mad thing. So I'm like, loving what is, is love is right in the middle between the two. Yeah, yeah. You think about this. Think about the person you love the most, right? And I'm sure you can point out all the negative traits in an instant. I'm not doing it on camera. Though. So am I. <laughs> She's going to watch this. So so imagine the person you love the most. I'm sure you could tell me all the things that you really like about them. Mm. All the things that you adore about them. But at the same time, you could tell me all the things that irritate the shit out of you about yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. But you love them anyway. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Anything else is infatuation. Yeah. And anything else, if there's only negatives, that's where resentment lies. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a once I under, once I start to really understand this, and I, it actually became a belief of mine. I just got less emotional. Mm. I don't get too carried away with the highs, and I don't get too carried away with the lows. Yeah. And funny enough, I was talking to a friend of mine, Rob. Um, he has a podcast. He's just changed the name of it. I want to give him a shout. It used to be called The Footballer's Mindset. Now it's called Inner Game Academy. So he he, he works with people like Jack Wilshire. Um, he works with uh, a lot of Premier League footballers he can't name. He runs a podcast with uh, Luke O'Neill, who plays for Sunderland, a uh, mate of mine. Um, and he says that often the difference between someone that's world class and someone that's like top level isn't necessarily skill level or talent level or even hard work it's that the real top cast players never get too carried away with the highs and never get too carried away with the lows you don't find these top cast players on confidence players which means that they need to feel confident to play well yeah, yeah. they just don't get that confidence dashed and it's never too high because they're able to sit right in the middle they don't get too carried away with wins and they don't get too carried away with losses yeah it's a, it's a yeah, really it makes interesting thing sense. yeah 
Yeah. And, and I think so they're they, very balanced and neutral. I don't think society has that. I think it's a very small percent. And I think it, it takes, it, it sometimes takes someone to tell you. For instance, I, I'm a pretty uh, a semi-intelligent guy. Yeah. I've, I've been around, I've done a lot, but I'm sat there talking about imposter syndrome and it's not until I hear you say, it's not a fucking real thing. I've gone, yeah. actually, it's not a real thing. Yeah. I've needed somebody to tell me that. Yeah. And it makes though, a lot of sense when I'm like, well, describe what it is. Yeah, yeah. And it's not as, I don't say it to be controversial. I'm like, I just, I don't see, because I could say, and I say this when I'm on the stage, I'm like, at any point, one of you fuckers could stand up and say, Paul, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. At some point, I was in Puerto Rico in February. Last February it was, actually. It feels like two minutes ago. Last February, I'm speaking to this event in Puerto Rico. I've been flown out. My family's been flown out. Put in a hotel for a week. Fucking flights all paid for. And that Gary V's the fucking keynote speaker. And then me, and I'm like, no country knows who I am. Yeah. People can't understand what I'm saying because yeah. of my <laughs> accent. So I'm going to talk really slow. None of them are there to see me. So I said I could... I could feel like an imposter right now, but the reality is I'm just uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, and I don't see how saying I have imposter syndrome helps me at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, It might make me feel better temporarily, but is it going to make me better? Is it going to make me do better? Nah. No. So I understand the label, but I can't, I won't use it because it won't serve me. It's like, I don't say I have anxiety. Yeah, yeah. I don't say my anxiety because that doesn't serve me either. I think it can help you when you're first trying to figure something out. Why do I feel like this? Well, mm. you can't call it this, but then I'm like, I don't want to say that. I never say I'm bipolar. Yeah. I never say my bipolar. I never say I have bipolar. I was diagnosed bipolar in 2014. Yeah. Funny enough, when I manage my lifestyle, bipolar is not a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's, it's nowhere enough. to be seen. Yeah, yeah. Nowhere to be seen. And and I think if you have again, that's having the right mindset of it. And yeah. and I've I've worked with a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people just because of the, the the history of the jobs and stuff that I've done. Especially the young people I work with now. And negativity just seems to be the thing. They'll, they'll come to you with a problem, and you say, okay, here's a solution to the problem. Yeah, but I can't do that because of this. Okay, so here's a solution to that. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I can't do that because of this. I can't do that because of this. And it's always I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Which is the whole the the real it's negative. Really I won't. Isn't it? Yeah, stay. Really I won't. Yeah, and. How I look at it is, I'm thinking, okay, then I'm sat. YouTube at the moment is it's what I'm trying to push because I want to try and influence more people. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, oh, not many people have watched this video, and I've lost five subscribers this week, and I, I haven't recorded content because I've done this, and I haven't, I can't, I won't. I, yeah. And yeah. before you know it, you're consumed with negativity. By the end of the week, I said to my missus, this is probably about three weeks, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I'm shutting it down. I'm, I'm not doing any more videos. And she went, what's that going to achieve? Mm -hmm. And I actually... Yeah, it's class. Yeah. yeah. That's class. Do you know what? I had a mad discussion at jujitsu the other week, right? I, did, I went in, and what I did was for a few weeks, I just had privates. Yeah. So I didn't go to where I normally train. I had a few privates just to work on my own game. Yeah. Work on the things that I want to get better at without like a class where you just do what the professor teaches really, right? Which is fair enough. Yeah, yeah. And I went back and one lad said, I thought you'd quit. I was like, I had. He was like, what was wrong? Like, I said, uh, I'm shite. <laughs> and he said, and you thought not coming was going to make you better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't even think he realised that what he said yeah. was like, holy fucking shit, man. I almost gave him a mic. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was almost like, say that on my Instagram now. Yeah, yeah. Say I'm going to use that later. I'm going to use that later. You thought that not, you thought that not coming was going to make you better. Yeah. What you thought that not doing the work was going to make it yeah. anything better. It's, it's a really interesting thing. But you know what you're touching on there? I think one of the things, skills that we got to have is just being curious. I'm just curious. Yeah. Is that true? Is that true? Yeah. That, that's a thing. Yeah. Is this, you know what, people are obsessed with these, um, like, pop psychology, like, fucking narcissist and yeah. uh, gaslighting and yeah, yeah. toxicity. Everyone's toxic and yeah. healing. Toxic healing. I'm on me healing. In healing. What the fuck's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, not everything's trauma, mate. On me inner child. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Yeah, yeah. I'm curious to know about that. Like, I'll dismiss it quite quickly. Yeah. But I kind of, I've realized that also I used to do, I do that with... I used to dismiss things quite quickly. Like, I take the piss out of journaling. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get to that in a minute. I, I, like, I'll take the piss out of all them. And someone did it the other day. I got tagged in a video that someone did. Where I was like, oh, meditation's for this. It's for fucking people that have no hobbies. <laughs> Ice baths are fucking weird. And there was other things. And I was like, that's what I used to say when I couldn't do them either. I'm with James on ice baths. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's on them now, isn't he? I, I don't know. Because I, I, I've, I've seen the podcast from I, a couple I, of I years was saying, ago. Where... Darren did a video. I said, mate, if you're too pussy to do an ice bath, just say. <laughs> just say, I'm too fucking pussy to go on an ice bath. Like, that's got to be better than taking the piss out of you. Yeah, I like yeah. it. But it's like, I did that with jujitsu. I did that with everything. It's because I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. And then I just started to become more curious. I'm like, fucking hell, I was quite wrong about this. And that's good. Exactly <laughs> the same. 
exactly the same. So we were just we were just yes. talking about um, ice baths and being a pussy. Yes, because um, that was. Well, that, I wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. And <laughs> it, it's really funny because it's it, it's kind of one of the things I say to a lot of my um, people that come through is just just get on with it. Don't be a pussy. And I've got yeah. it on my whiteboard. It, yeah. it says push day. Don't be a pussy. Yeah. Leg day. Don't be a pussy. Yeah. Um, and my wife tried to put that in one of my YouTube posts. Yeah. She tried to write. Don't be a pussy. Just get on with it. And it wouldn't let her. It gave her a warning. It said mm. you can't use that terminology. I've just went and put there, because I got a blue tick. I went in the stories. I don't know if I mentioned I got a blue tick. Oh, no. Yeah, no, <laughs> you hadn't mentioned that at all today. But I went in the stories there, and I went and put, fuck you, scammers. And yeah. it wouldn't let us post it. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, so, but you can, hang on. I can't post the word fuck, but you can let somebody pretend to be me. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, Madness. isn't it? Madness. So anyway, we could we could talk for another hour about <laughs> social media bullshit because right. it's it, it winds me up. Yeah. But um, I, I think there's I know you, your man out there, Matt, was getting a bit stressed because you haven't got a great deal of time. So I just want to cover um, just a couple more things. I want to talk about journaling because this is something that my wife bought me a journal about six months ago. I looked at it and went, "I'm not a 14 year old girl. Um, I'm not filling that <laughs> so, out." So did I. I don't, I don't fucking I don't get it, and I still don't 100 percent get. Mm -hmm what it is i've listened to the the stuff you've said about it i think i need to see a journal um like with stuff written out i've got the world's most expensive journal outside thousand pound journal thousand pound journal uh, well 997 uh. <laughs> so my journal unstoppable journal it's only available inside of my highest ticket well one of my highest ticket programs if you're in it so we call it the world also have the world's most expensive cap Oh, you, uh, you only get it if you yeah. <laughs> I don't even charge for them, but we it's it's a little bit of a claim to fucking fame. Yeah, yeah. Uh, See, so journal, we're wearing it, you're like... You journaling for, for me, mate, is not about journaling your thoughts. Mm. It's actually about journaling two things. What you want and what you appreciate. Yeah. So, what we're, you got to consider that 95% of our thoughts are the same ones that you had yesterday. 80% of those, that 95% are negative thoughts. Your brain's wired like that. It's wired to keep you safe. Yeah. So if you want to do something about that, you have to... End up, so, so negative thoughts, essentially, we have negative thoughts, and negative thoughts happen when we're focused on what we don't want, when we're focused on what we don't like, when we're focused on how we don't want to feel. That's where all these... This is, that's where all that negative shit is. We're focused on what we don't want to have happen, right? So if I want to interrupt that, then I have to almost... I have to do something different. So journaling in the style that I do is called prompted journaling. And you got to think about what I'm focused on, I'll get more of. What I'm focused on, I'll feel. Right? So I can change the way that I feel in an instant by asking a different question and focusing on something different. So for example, if I asked you to tell me about three things in your life that you're really proud of, you'd start talking about them, right? So you've asked your brain a question, your brain will start looking for references. And once it finds those references, you'll start talking about it or thinking about it or writing about it. And your brain will create neuropeptides, send them via the spinal cord to the hormonal centers, and the end result of that is a feeling. That's how important journaling is. So what I'm focused on, I'll get more of. What I'm focused on, I'll feel. Where attention goes, energy flows, and results show. My new favorite is what I, um, what I, where I give my attention, I add momentum. So if I want to feel worse, I'll think about more things that make me feel like shit. I'll watch more things. I'll yeah, read yeah. more things that make me feel like shit. It's obvious, yeah, yeah. right? So, but focus, this thing that we call focus is controlled by questions. So in a, in a prompt, the journaling, the questions will direct your mind and steal your mind to what you do want, to how you do want to feel, to who you do want to impact, to people call it a gratitude journal. That's not really my thing too much. Yeah. I think it's too passive. I think gratitude's a bit passive. Like you're thinking about things that you're grateful for things that you haven't really made happen. I prefer appreciation, which I appreciate this that I got done today. I appreciate this compliment that I got. Whatever. So morning questions for me are focusing on what I want, what I do want to have happen. Maybe what I'm grateful for that day. But essentially I'm steering my mind towards being empowered yeah. and steering my mind in a way that makes me feel good instead of default, my default is my mind's going to focus on what I don't want, what's dangerous, what might go wrong. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? That's where we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. So that's all journaling does. Yeah, it takes yeah. my mind in another direction and therefore where I add attention, I add momentum. So I start adding momentum to my future. I start adding momentum on what I want. People that are depressed are focused on the past or the present and they can't see, particularly suicidal people, they have no compelling future. Yeah. Which means that they're lost. So they 
All they can think about is their present, which they hate, and their past, which they usually also hate, or a past that they've maybe lost something. So when they can't see a compelling future, they just get caught up in all this fucking darkness. They can't see a way out. Yeah, yeah. So when when I'm focused on a compelling future, a mission, a sense of purpose, a fucking animal to hunt, then I can't help but get enthused about it. I can't help but get excited about yeah, it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It completely changed my energy with thought alone. I can change my body. I can create an emotion with thought alone. I mean, how fucking amazing is that when you get it? Yeah, and and it's it's insane to think that that, that can be possible. Yeah. And I know that um, something... It takes training. Yeah, That's all. It yeah, takes yeah. training. Something that my, my wife said, and we, we have used this in a couple of our videos, yeah. is think of think of five positive things for today. And mm -hmm. one of the videos I put out a couple of weeks ago was exactly saying mm -hmm. that. Think of think of something that you can be grateful for today. I do, I do it every day. Yeah, what have yeah. been your three biggest wins today? Yeah. And, and I think Every morning, what are you most excited about? Oh, yeah. nothing. But well, okay, create something then. Yeah, yeah. Make it up. But that's human nature, isn't it? It is. To that. get up. And me and my wife We're not it. trained. No. We're not trained to do We have no training. Yeah. I've just had a new group, Unstoppable 20, it started on Monday. I'm doing a Q and A Saturday morning before I fly flying all day, and the questions I've got are like, because I teach the journaling, very basic journaling week one. Because mm. I don't like I, when people are struggling, I don't like to ask them to move mountains. Like I'm not going to tell them to exercise. I'm just going to say, pick up a pen, pick up a piece of paper, answer these questions. Yeah, yeah. I'm not asking you to move mountains. Yeah. I'm not asking you to change the world. I'm asking you to change your thought process, or at least be willing to. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I get is that the thought it would be easier. Well, you've never fucking done it before. Why would it be easy? You know what I mean? One of yeah, the biggest, yeah. especially men. Men think that they should be better, great at everything. Yeah, and yeah. when they're not great at it first time, they give up. Yeah. I'm like, when you play golf, if you're good at golf, you, you got good because you reps. Yeah. Reps, 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 reps. And I'm like, are you willing to put the reps in? And if you're not, if you're not willing to pick up a pen, answer a couple of questions, then you've got no chance of changing. Because yeah, yeah. beyond this, the things that you have to do are harder than fucking writing on a piece of paper. Yeah, and I don't Harder. know. How I've, I don't know. I've never noticed it because it's harder either. Like one of the one of the first things that I tell clients when they're coming to me about weight loss mm -hmm. is, you don't ch don't change your diet, don't go in the gym, don't do anything for the first week. I want you to get a diary and write down everything you eat, yeah. everything, every yeah. calorie, every yeah. drink, every, and then and yeah. then come back to me with that. Yeah. And essentially, they're journaling their food. And when I did that, because I did that myself, I was like, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ! I ate four bits of pizza off Isaac's plate, and then I had that <laughs> sausage there. It's I had two, us. yeah, two chocolate biscuits. I had ten thousand calories that I'd, in a yeah. week that I'd yeah. never even yeah. thought I, I'd, I'd eaten. Yeah. And just that's when the thought process of diet and how you eat changed for me. You don't have to diet. It happened for me when I did the Byron Katie work because she had you download worksheets. Yeah, I remember spending nine days in Germany with that. It was fucking mind blowing. This thing we must have filled in three, four hundred worksheets in a week, right? And I was just like, well, there's things that come out of my mind where I get it on paper. I'm like, actually, that's not that bad. This is, I'm seeing it for what it is. When it's in your mind, if you've got a lot of training at thinking disempowering thoughts, if you've got a lot of training at creating thoughts that don't make you feel great, then you can't try and do it in here. Mm. Your ego will try and convince you that it's right. <laughs> so yeah, keep you stuck. Yeah, yeah. You've got to get it out of here and on paper and you'll start to see for what it is. Even, even writing down, like so people tell me, I feel like, I'm like, what emotion are you actually experiencing? And they write it down, it starts to strip away the intensity. Yeah. Oh, actually, maybe I'm not depressed. Maybe I'm just fucking, maybe I'm just exhausted. Yeah, yeah. I think that's most people. Yeah, yeah. I believe that a lot of people who are struggling with depression, the biggest challenge is that energy's in the fucking pan. Yeah. When you're tired, everything feels harder. It feels like you're fucking dr walking through fucking wet cement. Yeah, I've never done that because I'm not an idiot. Why would you do but, that? But like, it's, <laughs> it's a weird thing, isn't it? I'm but sure it's, like, it's very difficult. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, ask cats because they always fucking yeah, find yeah, a way yeah, across yeah. it, the little arseholes. So it's like, like, like that's what it feels like when you're tired. I'm like, yeah. what if you just manage? So the, the second module actually for these guys in Unstoppable 28 is let's start to look at your energy. Yeah. Let's start to see what you're doing that's fucking draining your energy. Yeah. And then let's start looking at actually I have this concept of like you have these things, batteries. There's things in your life that, that create energy for you. There are things in your life that give you energy. Mm. Like when you think about them, you get energized. Like I'm not even kidding. I get like that when I talk about football. I'm yeah. fucking obsessed with it. I always have been. Don't play, it was never that good. But if you it, even if you tell me where you're from, I'll be like, oh, straight away, Boston United. Don't know who <laughs> plays for them, never been, don't even know what league they're in, but I think of them straight away. Skegness or their closest teams, Lincoln, Lincoln City. Leslie's brother used to play for Lincoln City. Chris Maguire played for Lincoln City. No way. This kid, Brennan Johnson, not a Forest top player, spent a season alone in Lincoln City. That's how I know. But can you see the excitement in my yeah, voice? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. giving me energy. Yeah. Just that. Yeah. Like, but we also have things that are black holes for us. 
thinking about doing them drains the shit out of us. Yeah, yeah. What if you just started identifying those things and maybe did less of them if you can? Yeah. So like, inside of my business, loads of things that I don't do and I'm okay with making less money or not making as fast progress by not doing things that I hate. Because this random paradox about the gym, I don't enjoy going in the gym and picking things up and putting them back down. Mm. That's weightlifting, in it? Yeah, Pick that up, put it back down. Right. It's just not for me. It doesn't stimulate me at all. I'll do it, but not very often. And this paradox that we have is trying to force ourselves to do shit that we hate and then hating ourselves for not doing them. Yeah. That's why I love jujitsu. I never have to force myself to go. I get excited talking about it. I don't get excited talking about weight training. I'll do it if I really have to. But if I'm tired, I'm not going to force myself to do something that I hate. If I'm energized, it's easier because I'm like, oh yeah, I feel good. I'll go and do it. But there's other ways to get what you want. But if you can start identifying batteries, things that just thinking about them lights you up. Or it's, it's actually just things that you value. Once you know that, your life will change. Once I figured that out, what I valued, ADHD didn't really become a thing either. Because I only have ADHD on things that I've got no interest in. Yeah. You, you, you ask me something about, guess what? Because also with ADHD, you have attention surplus disorder, right? Which means that, <laughs> ask me something that I'm interested in, I'll talk about it. I won't be able to stop thinking yeah. about it. So things like business for me, not all of it, but business, I value it. I've been doing it for fucking 21 years. 22 years this year, I've been self-employed. Yeah. Like, you ask me a question about uh, getting naturally enthused about it. If you ask me about the numbers and cash flow forecasts and that, I'm not interested. And when I try and concentrate on it, I didn't know this so much until, so my wife's the numbers lady, right? She used yeah. to be a lawyer. So we'll be, I remember once, I'm, I'm saying, Leslie, can you do a training for the guys on cash flow forecasts? Not only do I not know anything about it, I've got no interest. And I watched the replay, but I started watching it. She's teaching it, and you can see me shuffling in the seat. I'm like, that. <laughs> I'm just like, I can't. So when I figured this out, I was like, well, I'm just going to spend more time doing the things that energize me and less time doing the things that don't. It doesn't mean my life's perfect, but it means it's a lot more flow to it. Yeah, There's yeah, a lot yeah. more flow. Do I get op the, the optimal results? No. But I don't do shit that I hate, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I think we get caught in this false economy of if I do enough shit that I hate, then one day I'll have a life that I love. Yeah. Yeah, and I've I think, tried that. Yeah, you tried that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know what and, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, Paul, as well? I'm like, beating yourself up for not liking the gym is like trying to force yourself to eat liver mm. when you hate liver and then beating yourself up for not liking liver. Just find a food that you do like. But by the way, that is fairly healthy. Right? So for me, it would be walking in jiu-jitsu. I'm fine with boxing. When I fell out of love with jiu-jitsu, I went back to boxing and realized that was actually quite boring now compared to jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, you find that thing that you love and you just fucking immerse yourself in it and stop trying to force yourself to do all this shit that you find boring and yeah, horrible. Yeah. And there's going to be things you've got to do. There's going to be there's going to be shit stuff. sometimes. And, and like, let's you have to teach it. Like traveling, for example. We talk about the downside. Yeah, right? yeah. The downside of doing some of the stuff that I do is I have to travel. Yeah, yeah. I just make it easier by taking my kids with us and my family come yeah, everywhere yeah. with us now. And that's the thing. That's the thing with me. So how how I've ended up here? Yeah. Well, I suppose I've ended up here because James Smith turned me down and <laughs> Mike Chadwick turned me down. So if that makes you feel <laughs> better, uh, right? James turns everyone <laughs> down. He didn't even respond. He didn't yeah. turn me down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but so I, I ended up here because I thought, do you know what? Sent you the message. You said, yeah, get in contact with um, Kath, yeah. Kath. Yeah, that's great. Accepted. Got that's part Kath. of the reason I don't like doing diaries and shit. Yeah. So Kath does it. Yeah, yeah. She gotta, loves it. Got to come up to South Shields. I said yeah. to my sister, I said, I've got to go to South Shields if I want to do it. She said, yeah. well, how important is it? I said, it's pretty important. The guy's yeah. sent me a big deal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Sam, Sammy's the optimal, <laughs> got, Sammy's the optimal word. It's my permanent state. He's getting a blue tick scene. So you <laughs> <laughs> predicted it. Yeah, okay. So uh, she said, well, I was going to come up and bring the family. I was going to bring the kids up. I was going to have a weekend of it because mm -hmm. I'm off work next week. Yeah. But that would mean two days I'd yeah, leave from yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So, and I couldn't do tomorrow. And obviously I'm away Saturday. Yeah, so, yeah. so I was like, oh, okay. So I, I thought, do you know what? If I want to progress where I'm going to go, this might help me progress. It mm -hmm. might, it might mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't, I've only lost like 50 quid in fuel or whatever mm -hmm. um, and a day's annual leave. Yeah. But it might, somebody might see that and go, well, he's been on with Paul Mort. Yeah. Like, who is this guy? Yeah. Let's have a look at his channel. Let's yeah. promote this. Or yeah. someone might or see- Or when you approach somebody else that I know- you could drop my name into the convo, and they might again. They might not. Yeah. But you've dramatically increased your chances. Yeah. It can't do me any harm. Your chances. Nah. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Nah. Like I'm nah. going to waste a day, maybe. Nah. But nah. I'm going to enjoy it because I'm going to meet someone that I'm, as I'm interested in. Not knowing Paul as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I have this thing where, you, like, every question you don't ask is an automatic no in it. Yeah, yeah. And we never regret the questions that we ask. 
we always regret the question. I mean, except will you marry me sometimes? But yeah, yeah. We, we, we often regret the questions that we don't ask. Yeah. It's like, oh, fucking hell, I wish I'd asked that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I wish I'd asked him for a selfie. Yeah. That's, that's me, son. Yeah. And we will see footballers, because where we sit at the stadium, right, we've got, we've got OK seats, right? And I know a few of the players. I'm like, son, do you want a selfie? I'm like, no, dad, it's embarrassing. And then afterwards, he'd be like, oh, dad, I wish I'd asked for that selfie. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, so, so yeah, I, I thought... No, I've I've got to go and I've got to go and give it a go. Yeah. And I said so again. This is the imposter syndrome mm-hmm. that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said to my missus, but what what if what if the guy thinks I'm a dick? Like, what if he's what, a dick. Yeah. What if he's I a had dick? this thought with what, Tyson what when I interviewed not, Tyson. I'm like, what if he's a fucking dick? Yeah, yeah. What if he's not the guy that, that <laughs> he he portrays? What if I'm I'm let down? And and yeah. her answer when I do this, I, I applied for a job a few weeks ago. Yeah. I didn't get it, yeah. but I applied for it and I wasn't going to. And I said because I said to her, what if I don't get it? And her answer is always to me, but what if you do? Yeah. Always. Yeah. Whenever I say, what if this happens, yeah. but what if it well, doesn't? You, know, you definitely won't get it if you don't apply. Exactly. You definitely yeah. won't get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's and what I people say it. when I'm like, when people, you know, when the skater like put themselves out there. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, out where? Also, what happens when you get there? But anyway, yeah, I yeah. say to them, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Well, no one will buy it. Like, well, right now, no one's buying it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're actually in the worst situation because you actually don't know. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I actually don't know whether they would have or not. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's even it. even then I have this thing where I'm like, listen, the, the, oh, you're not scared about getting criticised. I'm like, well, no one can criticise me more than I've criticised myself. There's nothing you can say about me that I haven't said and there's nothing you can think about me that I haven't thought either. Yeah, yeah. You think I'm a dick? Well, I think I'm a dick sometimes yeah. as well. And if Th- someone, thanks for noticing. And if someone does think you're a dick, like, what, what's going to happen? Fine, you're right? not going to die. Uh, like, you know, I love those, get I love those comments, mate. Yeah, yeah. Say, they'll just comment saying dick and I'll be like, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> been there. Gives me, gives me a bad tummy. Yeah. No, I'm scared to try it. <laughs> scared to try it. I'm allergic. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm conscious of the time. I know you've got a lot to do with that. I know you're a I busy have. man. So I just want to ask you one last thing. Yes. Because this whole thing's been selfless for me. Yes. Um, partly selfish because I wanted to meet you, which is great. Mm-hmm. But this is mainly to try and help my subscribers and do stuff for them but I just want to ask what where where do you think if you could give me some advice now what should I do now where should I go mm. with what we're doing ooh that's a great question um I think you have to get probably clearer on what you want like cuz impacting loads of people is kind of a bit bland it's like if someone came to you and said I lose I want to lose weight mm. you wouldn't let them get away with it you wouldn't would you yeah, no, no. you'd be like how much yeah, By yeah. when? What are you willing to do to get it? Yeah, what do you yeah, think the yeah. steps are? What do you think might get in the way? So I get a little bit clearer on that. How many yeah. people? By when? How right. do you think you can get there? What do you think is the optimal way to get there? What are you willing to do? What are you not willing to do? Who's already doing it? Yeah, yeah. That's so always a great question. Who's already definitions. doing it? Like, I just love this concept, and I learned it in 2020. There's a book out now, actually, by the guy I learned it from, Dan Sullivan. It's called Who Not How. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like that fast track. The cheat code in life is is who can help me get there faster? Who can open doors for me? Who can I position myself alongside to get there faster? Who can give me advice? Who can I, um, who can I ask for help? Like, I suppose we're doing that right now, but that whole who thing, yeah, like yeah. Who, who do I want to get on? So when we started the podcast, we're sat here. The room wasn't like this. It wasn't anything like this, actually. That whiteboard was there. And I remember my wife saying to me in 2020, it was in the lockdown, it was going a bit smooth. Like, because a lot of eyes were suddenly on me. People realized I had a problem. The demand for what I do went through the roof. So everyone's like, oh, your business grew. I'm like, well, actually, supply was low. Demand was really high. Because a lot of people just realized how fucked they were. They realized they didn't actually like their partner. They realized their partner didn't work in fucking blockbusters anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> blockbusters <laughs> closed, closed 15 years ago. In 1995. And so you had the people that got into personal development early on. Then they had the people towards the end where they were like, I feel like shit. All I've done is drink for weeks. So you had, I had a big supply. And then I was like, uh, it was going a bit smoothly for me. My wife said, you're bored, aren't you? I was like, a little bit. It became, this sounds horrendous to say, but it it was a bit easy and a bit predictable. And I value unpredictability. I value uncertainty, which is a business owner. I think you have to. If If you want certainty, business isn't for you. If you want familiarity and predictability, business isn't for you, right? So I value this highly. I like a challenge. I like new. So what do you need then? I said, well, I want a book deal. All right. And I want to start a podcast. So sat here. Shared, um, okay, who do you want on the podcast? We had people like Piers Morgan. We had people like Ant Middleton. We had Freddie Flint off. And then we had Tyson Fury. And so that's a who. I'm like, who's the who? And I was like, okay, who do we know that knows these people? Yeah, yeah. Who do we know that knows them? Randomly out the blue. Not even, I hadn't even thought of this person. I get a call. Basically, the first thing I did was I went to an after dinner speaker company. 
They were like, oh, you won't do it, and he wants 30 grand. So it was, A, you won't do it, first of all, but then they came back. I offered good money, and they said, it's 30 grand. I was like, nah, it's not for me. Yeah. Same day, he gets a call. This guy, hey, Paul, it's James Ward. Um, you, you've cornered a few lads on me boxing shows, and I've seen you fight twice. I was like, oh, hello, mate. <laughs> he said, did you, how much did you offer this company to have Tyson speak? I said, this much? He said, well, they told me it was this much. So basically, they'd added 10 grand on the number. <laughs> yeah so then he said okay let's get it done he said it's this much you have to pay it today and we'll have to do it next week and you have to come to Lancaster you'll know where that is there yeah, yeah yeah you have to come to Lancaster I was like fuck it I'm in and then next thing you know so who else do you want funny enough he's getting I'm doing an event I think in September at St James's Park I've got Vicky Patterson speaking and yeah, I've got I've seen that. it looks like Freddie Flint off oh, wow. and funny enough same day James rings me not about Freddie Flint. I said, Paul, I want to join your program. I said, like, let's fucking do it then. I said, by the way, can you get me a fee for Freddie Flint off? So it's all this who's. Yeah, yeah. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah. Who do I want on? Who knows them? Who can introduce me to them? Who's further ahead? Who do I, who owes me a fucking favor as one of my favorite yeah, ones? Yeah, yeah. And it's just, for me, mate, I think success in any, any area of your life, whatever you're trying to do involves other people. Mm -hmm. So you've just got to get good with people and impacting people and bringing good energy. Yeah, yeah. Like, people remember you. Do you know what I mean? If you've got good energy, people remember you. Some people might not like it. Some people might not be able to handle yeah. it. But most people, it, it's like yeah, you'll, you'll have a bit of a vibration about you. Yeah. And you become magnetic to people. And, other, and if someone's a who, someone's on your list of who's because they're magnetic to people. I was looking at your list of who's yeah, then. Sorry, it's not was, fucking up there. That's where my list was. That's where my list was. <laughs> your, your, your real imaginary list. <laughs> And the who is yeah. why the who is why I've travelled for hours. Yeah, exactly, you know, exactly. It's, it's, so it's now you've got to be like, who's the next who? Yeah, yeah. Who's the next yeah. who? And well, once you, this once this goes out, obviously. Yeah, and then when you become, you're trying to become a who to loads of people. So yeah, yeah. start getting clear on those numbers because the reason we keep quitting and wanting to quit is because we can't see progress. Yeah. But then we're not measuring progress. Yeah. So if your number is just like loads of people, as many people as possible, and there's no number. Yeah. You'll end up comparing yourself to people who started before you. Yeah, because it could be fifty, and I go, it's only fifty. Yeah. If yeah. I said I want twenty five and it's fifty, yeah, and, it. and, well, you're just at fifty compared to nothing, though. Yeah, yeah. Instead of fifty compared to James. Yeah. So yeah. I, when you say I've got a big follower, I'm like, have a fuck. But you got to remember, some of my friends are on fucking Tyson's on ninety million followers. Or yeah, something. yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I know people that have got three million, two million, four million, one million, hundreds of thousands, and then there's me with fucking thirty seven or forty six or something. I don't even know what it is. It's that low. You <laughs> think I've got a big following because you're comparing it to you? Do you want me to tell you I how many? I think I've got a tiny following. How many? 36 on Instagram. Is it? 62 on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Four, four and a half on, on YouTube. Though. Is it? Yes. Yeah, I don't even do YouTube. Well. <laughs> Apparently I've got 40,000 on TikTok, but I don't, oh, I don't I, log into them I things. Don't, no, I don't Horrible. Use, yeah, I don't Horrible. Stuff. My team obviously posts all that shit, but I'm like, I've got a tiny following compared to other people, but I've got a massive following compared to zero. Yeah, yeah. So it's the, it's the frame that you put it in. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like if you compared every workout to your best workout, you'd give up all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I my best workout was about 2009, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't do that, do you? No. You just get in this place of, I've worked out a day, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. I came to the gym as a win. Yeah, get so just gym. getting a video or getting a podcast out will win on its own because you can't. It depends on what comparison frame you put in. Do you know what I love talking about with this is? When you're on the motorway, Sorry, when you're driving around town and the limit's 30, it feels quite fast. Yeah, yeah. When you come off a motorway, it feels like snail's pace. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean by comparison frames. So you just got to put it in the right box, put man. Put it in the right way. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, amazing. Well, I, I, I'm eternally grateful for today. Oh, man, thank yeah. you so I've much. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, um, me too. Thank I'm you so much. still not cl clear if we're at Paul Mort Talk Shit or whether we're at the Fitness Hutch. We're at the Fitness Hutch. Not, not quite. That's why the lights are on. <laughs> so it's so, it's so strange, you know, doing your own podcast in yeah. your studio. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of the only way I can make it work now. Mate, thank you so much yeah, for having no, me on. Thank you. No. It's been a pleasure. It's been one of my favourite podcast interviews. And I've done oh, a lot. brilliant. Thank so you. Thank I you, appreciate mate. that. I'm also honoured that you came all the way down, mate. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, absolutely. So. Um,